Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now while Dale's first revision of the Alienware M11X launched with an already long in the tooth Core 2 processor, the R2 here offered up two tasty alternatives. Consumers could choose from an i5 or i7 CPU, both of which were new to the market themselves. Alienware machines have always divided people's opinions when it comes to both aesthetics and pricing, but personally I think this particular model looks great, and I'm sure the design was behind a lot of sales back in 2010. Retailing at just under £900 here in the UK a decade ago, I picked this chunky fella up for a touch under 200 last week. That's certainly a higher price than any other laptop with similar specs would sell for these days, but unlike other computers, these hold their value really well. So let's talk about this compact little beast. Despite its solid exterior, the smaller form factor means that the M11 XR2 weighs in at just 2 kilograms. It's far more deserving of being called a laptop than the 14-inch M14X and 17-inch M9700 we've checked out before, because this can actually be placed on your lap comfortably, without the worry of damaging anything that's vital to the future of your family name. If looking at the exterior isn't enough of a nostalgia trip, wait until we turn it on. Before logging, we're presented with facial recognition software. This isn't something I expected to see on a laptop of this age, and considering the quality of the webcam, I'm surprised at how well it works. You can even set the computer to lock if your face is out of view of the camera, which is hugely inconvenient, but impressive all the same. The Alienware themed desktop looks like something from a tacky sci-fi film, yet somehow I find myself intrigued by the custom changes to the Windows 7 interface. Any RGB lighting that kicks in at this point can also be customised to suit your personal tastes. These features in combination with the age-appropriate software that came pre-installed really takes me back to a simpler time in life, a time when this laptop was way out of my price range. Let's take a more in-depth look at the specifications. Although this could have been configured to have an i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD from the factory, the original owner, Ahmed here, decided to opt for a more budget friendly configuration that comprises of a 320 gig hard drive, i5, u520 and 2 gigabytes of RAM. That said, it's really easy to upgrade this machine yourself as the back plate comes off after removing just a handful of screws. And back in 2010, it probably would have been cheaper to upgrade it yourself than pay Alienware hundreds of pounds for more memory and a solid state drive. If you purchase one of these in 2021 and you don't want to tinker with the internals, you'll be pleased to know that Windows 7 still runs faultlessly on these base specs, though you'll probably want to install Google Chrome or a better browser than the Internet Explorer that you'll find built in. The discrete GT335M graphics card doesn't really sound like it's up to much today, but this once mid-range 1GB GPU really benefits from the low-res 1366x768 LCD display. While we're on the subject, I should say that the screen is pretty bright and vivid. It hasn't aged that badly at all. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 seems to be a popular title that popped up a lot in the original reviews for this system, so that's what I tested first of all. Plugging in an external mouse is a must, but the built-in keyboard feels decent with a nice bit of resistance to the keys. They sort of snap down as you push them. Now going online in Modern Warfare 2 these days is like navigating a minefield with a blindfold and a glaucoma, but I've found that performance between single and multiplayer modes as well as spec op modes tends to be pretty similar. Call of Duty games from last decade were pretty lenient on a wide range of PCs, and although the beefier spec i7 M11 XR2 was dubbed the most powerful notebook of this size, I can't imagine 
that meant too much because the 335M graphics card is the limiting factor even here, with an i5 and just 2 gigs of RAM behind it. I should also point out that the i7 that was available was still a 2 core 4 threaded chip as well. That said, 30 FPS plus is still doable with this machine and from what I gather, this used to be a much more acceptable accolade 10 or so years ago with portable gaming solutions. The emphasis on 60 frames per second seems to be a much more recent must have, at least from the many gaming laptop reviews I've read over the last few years. Perhaps it's because gaming laptops were never really taken as seriously by consumers or manufacturers as they are today, so anything over 30 FPS was considered fine. The original Skyrim also runs with at least 30 frames per second at 720p low. As far as 1280 by 720 gaming goes, this machine would have been acceptable for a couple of years after it launched, but there were a few titles that would have suffered or not started at all because of the lack of DirectX 11, which most modern games continue to use. Speaking of not starting, CSGO completely failed to launch past this white screen, and at this point I decided to add another stick of RAM in order to test out GTA 5. Another 2GB stick of DDR3 laptop memory is all I've got to hand right now, but it does mean that GTA 5 will launch and run, albeit with some serious frame rate issues. This was a bit of an afterthought, and I didn't really gather any performance data here. What I can say is that the game doesn't really run very well at all, and I'm sure you can probably pick up on that just by watching this video. It's super choppy, and there are issues all over the place. An Alienware M11X R2 from 2010 is certainly usable in 2021, but for anything other than playing older games or just web browsing, it might prove frustrating. It does look good though, right? That's all I really have to say about this machine. The CPU and GPU are soldered to the motherboard, so we can't really do any upgrades in terms of that. We could add an SSD to this thing and up to 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, maybe we'll do so, um, but at the end of the day, the 335M is probably going to be the main limiting factor of this machine, and that tends to be the way with these older systems. You'll often find that the CPU is up to much more, but the graphics cards always age far worse. It's the same thing with the uh, Samsung laptop I've tested before on this channel, the big chunky thing, and it's the same thing with a lot of these old laptops that I test as well. It's just that the GPU never lasts as long, especially when like this one, it only supports DX 10.1. That's it for this one then. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.